Hey everybody, Mental Fox here. Welcome back to another episode of my playthrough of Starfield. Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm glad you're here. We're just just here in the orbit of uh, Crete, I believe. If we uh, bring up our star map here, we'll see where we are. Yeah, just outside of Crete. And uh, we did a scan at the end of the last episode. We could hit R and it'll show all the resources. Or we could just hide the resources. But we're not here to mine the planet just yet. We're here to land at the Crete Research Base, and the reason that we're going to land here um, is because of uh, this mission that we're on. But first, we'll read this little tutorial. It says, Toggle which quest is tracked on your HUD. Only one quest can be tracked at a time. Select the name of the quest to expand the list of open objectives. Select any objective in the quest to track the whole quest. You can press the Set Course button to automatically navigate your active quests or navigate to your active quest subjective. Okay, uh, let's see, one small step. Barrett wants me to take the artifact to his colleagues in Constellation. I'll have his ship, the Frontier, and his robot Vasco for the journey. So we click on this. Okay, so we've traveled to Crete, and now we're supposed to land at the Crete Research Base. Now, one thing that I wish that this did was tell me why I'm doing this. You know, land at the Crete Research Base. Why am I landing at the Crete Research Base? Well, if I remember correctly, Vasco was like, hey man, as long as we're flying this ship around, these crimson pirates or whatever are gonna keep coming at you. So we're gonna need to go talk to their leader? That sounds insane. That's what we're gonna go do? How am I not gonna walk in the room and just start blasting? That's what I wanna know. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, land at Crete Research Base. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, land. Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, uh, that's, I think it's off to a good start. I'm digging it. I'll follow you from here on out, Captain. Okay, um, there goes a ship. I thought this was abandoned. Okay, so we could just exit the ship, or we could get up. Stretch our legs a little bit. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna holster our weapon. It's making all that noise. I guess it was that ship taking off maybe out there. Um, you can see in the lower right-hand corner my health is not the best, so I want to... See if I can't eat some food to increase my health. Now, what I'd like to know is what is my health in numbers? Uh, meaning, I just see this bar here. I don't know how many, like, health points I have. And I'd like to know because, you know, I could eat this chunk's apple and it says it restores five health, but... How much health do I have? Is this five points or is this three points? I don't want to eat this if it's going to restore more health than I need. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Look at this. Cool. Um, so yeah, where, where does it tell me about my character? It's the star map. Oh, that was neat. Okay, hold on. We'll come back to that. Don't worry. Whoa, back way out. Okay, and then we've got our ship. Skills. You receive one skill point to spend every time you level up. Each skill also unlocks a challenge. Complete the challenge and then spend a skill point to rank up the skill. The top row represents basic skills. The rows below are locked until you have spent a minimum number of skill points in that category. Okay, so we already have this. Remember, we got pistol certification because we decided to be a scoundrel. Well, uh, let's see, uh, physical, oh yeah, social, combat, so this is kind of like, uh, Skyrim, it feels like, except without as many choices, okay, um, yeah, man, huh, status, B, character, mm, okay, that's kind of cool, it shows us our traits in case we forgot, but where is my health? Here it is, here it is, here it is. Holy cow, 126 out of 180? Okay, so eating this this freaking apple isn't really gonna do much, but at least it'll get us there somewhat. 
Wow. Okay. Well, let's eat this stuff. We're going to eat this. Um, so a med pack would restore 4% health for 10 seconds. Uh, oh, this is a packaged chunks beef. This will restore 5 health. Um... Oh, I just ate it. Okay, an apple, sandwich, amp. Steroid-based performance enhancer designed to temporarily boost leg strength. Plus 35% movement speed for two meters. Two times jump height for two meters. Okay. So our health has gone up some, but not a whole lot. I mean, I could walk around the ship, you know, picking up food and eating it. Uh, although there's not a whole lot of it here, really. Right? There's a container of cereal that'll restore five health. There's a snack pack of Choco Bites. I wonder if I could, like, eat stuff straight from here instead of having to go into my menu. That's what I'd like to know. I mean, we're gonna, like, eat all of our stuff before we even leave the ship. But if we're gonna go see pirates, man... I just wanted to heal up a little bit, but that's going to take way too much time. Wow. Okay. Let's go see pirates. Wait a minute. I'm going to take this. I wonder if that'll get re reloaded. Whoa, we, why are you coming up here, Vasco? Captain Fox. Oh. Protocol Indigo dictates that I am to return to the Lodge with no deviations. We are here to stop the Crimson Fleet from pursuit. Nothing more. Really? Well, that's asking some questions. Why is this Crimson Fleet at Captain after Barrett? Uh, just who are you and Barrett? What's Constellation? Why is Barrett trusting you with his ship? Um, why is this Crim Crimson Fleet Captain after Barrett? I have often asked Barrett that same question at various times and about various individuals that wanted to cause us harm. The most likely answer is that Barrett personally insulted him, <laughs> typically by continuing to live, usually after escaping from certain death and often with an object multiple people wanted. <laughs> uh, well, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and Barrett and Constellation? Constellation is an explorer's society founded over 50 years ago with the mission of seeking out the unknown. Members often engage in expeditions in small groups, typically one or two people, or like Barrett and myself, one person and one robot. The membership is intentionally limited and small. Should you join Constellation yourself, you will be the 10th active member. Wow, that is a small group. Hey man, why is Barrett trusting me with his ship? Barrett would say that billions of years ago, we were all one with the cosmos. So technically, <laughs> you have known each other forever. But the more practical answer is likely that he needs you. The number of known people who have been mm. affected by the artifacts is now two. Without your investment in Constellation's mission, he may never know more about the experience you both share. So he is showing you trust in order to gain your support. Uh, did he just say that Barrett is the one who also had the experience? I guess I didn't pick up on that. Okay, so it's us and Barrett who were affected by the Constellation artifact not the constellation artifact by the artifact interesting okay and then we could trade gear with him there is room in my storage hold for further items okay so we could put stuff in his storage hold huh he's carrying around a laser cartridge okay i will try to remember that all right dude f5 Game quick saved. Let's move forward. Oh, look at this planet. Cool. I guess this is technically a, technically a moon, isn't it? According to the scanners, Whoa. the abandoned research facility is in this direction. What's this thing? Oh, these are critters. Okay. 
What do you think about those, Vasco? Huh? While I am programmed for combat, it is not my primary function. Oh, that's like you read my mind. Okay. Well, let's watch out for these critters. Check it out. going down here. Be careful, Captain. Ah. Alien creatures are often unpredictable. Okay, we have a scanner. Ooh, scan creatures, minerals, and plants. Each unique item scanned progresses your survey data of the planet. Completed survey data can be sold for credits. Scanner mode also unlocks additional features such as building outposts and using social skills like diplomacy and intimidation. Okay. So we're doing a little bit of surveying here. We got a Crete stalker. Um, let's see here. How do I s Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. 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 Um hmm. survey. So Crete Stalker. So I want to understand this lead deposit. Whoa. Okay. So could I... I guess I need to put... Whoa, I just... Oh, 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 oh! What the... Oh, okay. Um. Well, unfortunately, right now, the only way I know how to bring up an inventory item is to go in here and go into weapons. Okay, I've got Eon chosen. I'll need to figure out how to add weapons to quick slots. Uh, okay, in the lower right corner I got favorite, so I could do favorite and I could put it in slot one. Okay, and then if I wanted to bring up my cutter, I could put it in my cutter Okay, zero is health. Okay, so I just took some health. All right, so I could put my clutter, my cutter here. Hey, leave my robot alone. Okay, we got him. We get some experience points. We could do a scan. Uh, Crete Stalker, thirteen percent scanned. What does that mean? 13% scanned. Does that mean maybe I need to find more of these before they're scanned? I'm not sure. Uh, over here is that lead deposit. Okay, so I need to exit. Oh, scan. Okay, so we scanned that. Okay, so we've scanned two of eight resources. All right. And then if I wanted to, I can switch to this thing. Can I do this? Did I get any lead for that? Did I? Um, resources. Lead. Okay, there we go. It's new. All right. So we just got some lead. All right, that's exciting. Okay. All right, this is kind of cool. You can scan things. So really, are we just going to walk around planets with our scanner out all the time? Is that what's going to happen? It's kind of looking that way. Here's some more things over here. Here's some silver. Okay. We've scanned three of eight resources over here. Some iron. We've now scanned four of eight resources. So I can back out of this. I can switch to this thing. And let's pick this up. Silver added. So this is... Oh! Ooh, look at that jump. Okay, looks like that's it. All right. Oh, we could even scan with this thing out. 
silver. Is there more silver here? Where is this? Okay. Huh. Alright. What's this? Lead. Oh, we've already scanned the lead. Okay, and I can do this from from within the scanner. <laughs> this is funny. I mean, Vasco's like, we are here for one reason only, and that is to talk to the captain. Nothing else. And then here I am. Hold on a minute, Vasco. Uh, I'm going to go pick up some iron while I'm here. Let me do a little bit of shopping. Okay, here we've got Crete Research Lab. And we've got some more silver. See no reason why I wouldn't pick that up. Some iron down there, I guess. What is this? Oh, okay, the game is like pointing me in the direction to go. That's interesting. Okay. Hey, look, a path. I don't see anything out there right off. Over here. Dust roots. Ooh, here's some more lead. I'm really surprised Vasco isn't saying anything to us, chastising us. Scan. Dust root, 13% scanned. Okay, I don't quite understand that. I need to find another dust root and see if my theory is correct that. You have to scan more than one of them. More lead. How far away can I do this from? Fairly far. The Crimson Fleet is a confederation of smaller, independent pirate crews, yeah. all flying under the same banner. They are typically unscrupulous and violent. Well, they're scummy pirates, so they're all going to die if I have anything to do with it. And I do believe I do have something to do with it. feel very wide open right here. Apparently they haven't decided to be afraid of me yet. But they should be. Oh, they should be. Getting all cocky. Something over here. What is this? More lead. I mean, don't these pirates care about all these minerals here? I mean, this is good stuff. This is just free money just sitting on the ground, man. Don't leave that stuff laying around. Put this away. flashlight here. Did they leave anything in here for me to help myself to? Scummy pirates. Yeah, I'll steal from scummy pirates. Look at this. I took your fire extinguisher. What are you going to do if there's a fire? You're screwed now, buddy. Should have thought of that before you just let your fire extinguisher sit around. Should have, like, locked it up. <laughs> Lock up your fire extinguisher, everybody. <laughs> uh, okay. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Huh. Synthafoam container. All right. Well, I'm not going to go picking up garbage. I'm not that desperate. I mean, I am pretty desperate, but I'm not that desperate. Oh, down on the ground here. Oh, a notebook. Got some notes. Ooh. Hell yeah, I'm taking that. First aid. Security. No admittance without security pass. F5. Quick save complete. In we go into Creed Research Lab. Well, 
Well, much to my surprise, no one here to greet me. Notepad. Uh, reminder, run, it says. Bad people, bad jokes, too. Starlocked board game. Solar Frontiers game. We got a desk that we can't loot, which is a little disappointing. Bad people, bad jokes too. Why did the chicken cross the road? Huh? What's a chicken? Knock knock, who's there? Planet. Planet who? If I throw a party, will you help me plan it? Oh my god. Yeah, these are pretty bad. Ecliptic mercenary says to a woman, I've been hired to kill you and I always get the job done. Woman says, can't we talk about this, son? <laughs> How do you keep an idiot in suspense? Eh? Huh? Surely you've heard that one before. How do you get a free star collective hick out of a tree? Wave. Uh, Lewis Lupper's Bad People, Bad Jokes Volume 2 is the follow-up to his original work, and just like its predecessor, it has become a cult hit. Great. Solar Frontiers, Starlocked board game. I mean, yeah, we don't really need to be picking all this stuff up. Curious. These are United Colonies markings, but we are in Free Star Collective space. It then stands to reason that this huh. was once a secret UC facility. Really? Once a secret UC facility, huh? I'm always looking for... Oh, polytextile, uncommon manufactured component. This item can be used as a component in crafting. Well, yes, please. I'll take that. Oh, the looting has begun, ladies and gentlemen. It is in full force. It is looting season in Starfield. Got some stairs going up. Uh, down here. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a heat leech? Go get it, Vasco. Vasco, will you take care of that for me? I don't want to use my ammo. Vasco, it's right... Vasco! Dude, get it. I don't want to use ammo. I wonder if I could use my, um... Tool for... Again, against it. I hope I adequately assisted you during combat. Well, finally. Get some nutrient stuff. Uh, that, was, that was creepy, man. That thing jumping out at me. I didn't like it. Uh, we've got Toxin, Common Organic Resource. Use that for crafting. We'll take that. Be quiet, it says. Folder, Red Rover, come over. Um, we will read that later. If I remember. Chair to sit in. Coffee mug, cylinder. Nothing terribly interesting here. I don't think. Okay. Let's um see what's over here. We got a locker. Cube. Omega The Last Days. Another book to read. Uh, if you've never seen my playthroughs, uh, and playthroughs with books, I try to remember to um, read the book at the end of an episode, so hopefully I'll remember that. That way, if you're not interested in listening to me read, you can just exit. The episode, no hard feelings. Safety protocol. Remember to follow all decam decontamination procedures before exiting this area. Remember. Now, well, nothing too terribly interesting down here, in my opinion. But that's okay. Alright, let's go upstairs, see what kind of trouble we can get into. I'm going to try to F5 more frequently. All the looting I do, I 
I don't want to have to loot again if I die. Or rather, when I die. Don't touch the animals. Wear safety goggles. Wear a lab coat. Wear gloves when necessary. Don't eat at your workstation. Clean up your workspace. Okay, mom. Jeez. Okay, still nobody up here. Workplace safety is everybody's job. Sculpture. Caffeine. Chemists have all the solutions. Good one. Uh, document tray. I'm just, you know, obviously just looking for interesting stuff, story related stuff, valuable stuff. That's what I'm looking for. I'll tell you what, this game runs really well, I think. I, um, if you're curious, my video card is an RTX 4070. Unfortunately, this game doesn't do any ray tracing, I don't think. So far, what I've seen of ray tracing, it really hasn't impressed me. I haven't seen anything that just blows my socks off yet. But, I mean, having said that, I do think this is a very good-looking game. I really like the lighting in it, although I do feel like my flashlight is too bright. I wish I could turn it down a little bit. What are we walking into? Something 46 meters in that direction. Oh. Scientist. So he's got a notebook here. I picked up a notebook before. Take his chlorine. And you know, when I, when I see a book lying next to a dead body, I think, ooh, maybe we'll learn something about him. But um, the notebook we picked up before didn't have anything written in it, I don't think. Yeah, there's no, there's no notes in that notebook. So that guy just will remain a mystery. Boy, he looks like he died a pretty painful death. Storage box with 80 credits in it. Now, see, that doesn't make any sense. What are pirates doing leaving leaving credits lying around. History of Xenobiology. Okay. Over here. Thing in the box, nothing. All right, we'll leave him that fire extinguisher. Medical sample tray. TV up there, cool. In here. Nothing terribly interesting. Yeah, this is this is giving me Fallout vibes. All the different stuff just laying around desktop organizer, you know, just stuff that's not important, but maybe it could be used for crafting. Well, whatever we're looking for is gonna be behind this door. So another F5, it doesn't take long. Okay, it looks like, oh. <laughs> Something's out there, all right. I think we're going to come in guns blazing. That's kind of what it's looking like. Cafeteria. Oh, we got some music here. Oh, pirate, they're bad guys. Yes. Oh, yeah, pirates. It is a shame. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. It is a shame, isn't it? Where are you? Vasco? No. Bad Vasco. Don't get in my way. trying to kill me, but I am not technically alive. <laughs> Hell, he's down. Good job, Vasco. That guy really just gonna stand here and let me shoot him? Where'd he go? Is he dead? 
No, he's not. He's down. Oh, there's another one over here. Oh, Vasco, I need your help. Good job, Vasco. Good job. Oh, gosh, I've only got three bullets left. Hopefully we can loot these guys and get bullets from them. Oh, scummy, scummy pirates. I do not need your rescue axe. Full food spiced worms. Yeah, man. I'll take that. Okay, it doesn't... I don't know if we got hit or not. My health doesn't look any lower than when I started. Cubic food. Because nothing says the future like a cube. What do you got? Credits. Some ammo. Apparently it's ammo for a different weapon, not this one. And something called Kraken? Is that a weapon? Let's take a look. Weapons. Kraken. Ooh, look at this little gun. Uh-huh. Does that say... No gods, no masters. This uses 6.5 millimeter ammo. Our weapon uses 7.7 .7 millimeter ammo. The Maelstrom also uses 6.5. So, oh, this is getting kind of crazy. We'll put the Kraken in um, slot two. Put the Maelstrom in slot three. Okay. All right, what do you got? Credits, ammo. Maelstrom. So I just picked up another Maelstrom. Does it show that I have multiple ones in my inventory? Is it telling me that I have five of them? I think that's what it's telling me. So... Yeah, we'll have to... I mean, obviously, we'll need to keep an eye on our inventory. But I'm carrying five of those now. I'm going to switch to this weapon since I have so much more ammo for it. Boom pop. 75 credits. No thank you. Seems kind of expensive. Bolt cutters. Succulents. Bitten sandwich. Are they always bitten sandwiches? Uh, okay. Oxygen is consumed with exertion, such as sprinting, melee attacks, and jumping. Oh, you know what? You didn't even tell me about oxygen game. Where's oxygen? What's this thing down in the lower left-hand corner that I totally did not look at? We've got O2 and CO2. Okay, so it looks like O2 is maybe the bar on the bottom. That curved bar. Watch when I jump. You'll see that it reduces a little bit and then it comes back. That's interesting. Oxygen. Did not even see that down there. Okay, we're going to go through there next. I keep looking at these pieces of paper. I wonder if we'll just see the same pieces of paper over and over again throughout the game. Or if these pieces of paper are unique to uh, this structure we're in right now. Here's a toilet. Some milk. Well, every little bit of health helps. So as gross as that is, I mean, is anything grosser than milk sitting next to a toilet? I don't know, man, it's pretty gross. And I think milk's kind of gross to begin with. Although I do like everything made from milk, pretty much. <laughs> Cheese, ice cream, even sour cream. But milk, not a fan. But I'm the same way with tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes, but I like pretty much everything made with tomatoes. Salsa, ketchup, pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, you know the deal. Okay, time to F5 it and go through the next door here. This all feels very good to me. A lot of times when I first start playing a game, the controls feel awkward or janky or uh, they don't have any weight to them. But this, this feels good to me. I'm liking this quite a bit. Feels good. Oh, I'm not liking this long hallway, I'll tell you that. Nothing is beyond our reach when we work together. Go down here to the living quarters. Oh. Oh. Classic United Colonies. 
Nice. <laughs> One more time. Okay, they're watching a video, it sounds like. We're gonna do some creeping. Hopefully we'll sneak up on them. We see them before they see us. Egmund Desk Assistant. Yeah, we'll do some sneaking, man. Nice, comfy quarters. Oh, I like it. I like it quite a bit. We got a chair, desktop toy, meeting, some scribbles. Who is safe? Unlock. Oh, there's going to be lock picking. Fill in all open slots in every layer to open the lock. Select a key and rotate it until it lines up with the gaps in the security layer. Slot the key to fill in the gaps. Each key can only be used once. How many keys do I have? Fill in all open slots in every layer to open the lock. Select a key and rotate it until it lines up with the gaps in the security layer. Slot the key. Oh gosh, what? What am I doing here? Okay, so. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. Auto slot, slot key. Start to enter. So. What am I doing? Slot key. Start. Huh. Uh huh. Mm. I don't know how to do that. Oh, here's a digit pick sitting right here. Oh, I picked one of these up from my ship, so that's how I was able to get in there to begin with. Blue, blue flighted dart. Oh, there's a dart, all right. A uh, cooler with some red harvest rye in it. Sure, why not? Blue lab outfit. 5% chance of research sudden developments. So what, like I could pick this up and maybe like wear it before I do research back on my ship? I don't know. Smoked salmon filet just lying on the floor. Yeah, I'm going to pick that up and just shove it in my mouth. There's a nice bed that we could sleep in if we wanted to. Kind of want to, but I'm not going to. What is this? UC Battle Meal Multi-Pack. Heck yeah, man. Restores 20 health. We'll take that. Okay, I've actually done a couple of saves and reloads to try to figure this out, and I'm still not 100% sure I get it. But we have a limited number of these, these things that need to fit into these slots. So you could see here we've got this, this, and this, and we could rotate them around, but none of these line up with this outer ring. So we could assume that th the, this pick is for the inner ring. So if we move this around, I don't even see it working with the inner, oh, there we go. Okay, see, so see how this will slot up with the inner ring? Okay, so we're good there. Now I'm going to move to this slot, or level, or whatever you want to call it. Now we have two of these, and we need these to line up somewhere. Okay, these line up with these two inner slots. Now we go here. We need these two to line up. Okay, it goes up with these two. We go here, and then these two are going to line up here. Okay, so I could go ahead and slot these two. Then I could go here and slot these two. Now I can slot all three of these. And then slot these two. And we're in. And what do we get? We get some credit. 816 credits. Wow. That seems pretty good. Okay, well, there you go. Wow. 
that is crazy, but that is how that works. I don't know if I explained it very well, but I will tell you one thing. The game did a terrible job of explaining it, in my opinion. Terrible job. But I figured it out. Let's keep looking around these quarters here. I got some lockers that, you know, I do like to open me some lockers. Uh, pencil case. That's no fun. Don't know what that is. Well, yeah. doesn't look like there's anything fun for us to open up in there. Ooh, this is fun. Another med pack. Yes, please. A computer. Oh. Starware operating system. New beginnings. Oh, this is Wynn. This is the voice that we heard on the recording that the pirates were watching. Hayden Wynn, Personal Journal, January 13th, 2306. So this was about 24 years ago, because I think that um, the game started in 2330. I can't believe it. I got the posting. The United Colonies Xeno Warfare Division is now official. I can't even imagine the amount of red tape they had to cut through at mast, but it's long overdue, and I get to be a part of it from the ground up. My official title will be Associate Xenobiology Technician, and I ship out in three days. Amanda is upset, but I assured her I'll have plenty of leave and will be back in New Atlantis all the time. I'm still not sure where I'm going. Definitely somewhere in United Colonies space. Guess I'll find out when I get there. Well, we're not in United Colony space. We're in freeze space space or something. Candidate one. On February 6th, almost a month later, we got our first extraterrestrial candidate today. What appeared to be an alien form of Lukaj Venusta, essentially a giant spider. Mickelson, in full protective gear, attempted to attach the neural control interface, NCI. Our security detail is still trying to remove him from the cocoon, and we had no choice but to put down the creature. A minor setback. None of us expected success on the first try. I heard Dr. Paulson tell the others that a detachment of United Colonies Marines is scheduled to deliver another creature next Thursday. Ashta specimen. May 5th. Wow, a couple months later. I'm not sure how they managed it, but the UC Marines actually managed to bring us an Ashta. It's not that the Ashta is a terrifying beast and natural predator. Those are both exceptional and wonderful qualities and essential to the work we're doing here. It's that the Ashta is native to the planet Aquila in the Cheyenne system. Aquila, home to Aquila City, capital of the Freestar Collective. Leave it to a group of ground pounders to grab a candidate right from the enemy's backyard. Though it does beg the question, have Freestar Collective scientists managed to weaponize their greatest natural predator? If so, our timetable just got accelerated. Trial failure. Just a couple days later, any fears that our Freestar Collective counterparts have managed to weaponize the Ashta have been completely dispelled. After the Mickelson debacle, we determined the NCI should only be attached under full sedation, so that wasn't an issue. The problems started immediately afterward. The Ashta proved incredibly resistant to synchronization, and we never achieved control fidelity beyond 47%. Dr. Chin's arm was nearly ripped off five minutes into the first trial. In short, the Ashta simply can't be controlled. If not by us, then certainly not by the Freestar Collective. Dr. Paulson has been in touch with Colonel Kasarov. Looks like the Marines will have another species collected and dropped off by this time next week. More disappointment five days later. Another creature, another failure. No fault of the UC ground pounders. We wanted a predator and they delivered. Though these things are... S <laughs> these things were so alien, Paulson had a difficult time deciding on a designation. Opted for Reptin's Venom. Shame we couldn't properly sink the NCI. These things would have been spectacular. Especially the poison. New specimens. A couple months later. Marines dropped another few specimens off this morning, totally unscheduled. Best way to describe them? They're arthropods. The alien equivalent of Homerus gamerus. Basically giant space lobsters. Very promising giant space lobsters. 
I'm not entirely sure where the UC grunts found these particular test subjects. Some godforsaken backwater rock, I imagine. After the third or fourth unsuccessful trial, I stopped asking. None of those earlier species could be controlled with any reliability. As noted in my earlier logs, their natural aggressiveness made them effective weapons, but a bullet is less than useless if the gun keeps turning itself on the shooter. But these new creatures possess a perfect natural disposition. Not aggressive, even docile, yet capable of defending themselves with deadly efficiency when threatened. And when they do go on the attack, they're terrifying. So we'll see. And then finally, relocation. We're moving, packing up shop, and transitioning the entire operation. It's happened so fast, my head is spinning. The work on the arthropods has been so successful, we're actually relocating to their homeworld. We'll have an unlimited supply of creatures for the Xeno Warfare Division. I've been named Senior, senior Xenobiologist. That means I'll be running the entire facility. My first instinct was to tell Amanda... I'm still not used to her not being there. I'll give Mickelson credit. The guy really went to bat for me. He let the masked brass know that it was my work tuning the neural control interface that was instrumental in controlling the arthropod. I guess Paulson is being forced to retire. Good riddance. That's a lot of stuff. But we get to look at computers. That's exciting. That's a great way to learn about stuff. Caseless shotgun shell. Okay. Full food spiced worms. Bed. Another board game. So in, in Fallout, you can like pick things up but here it doesn't look like I could pick things up and move them around, or at least if you can, I don't know how to do it yet. Battle pack. A wire spool, could that be useful for making stuff maybe? Got some dumbbells down here. Uh, Vasco, do you mind? Get right up in my grill. Okay. Well, we've explored this whole area, I believe. Oh, okay, Vasco. door. Pretty cozy. Uh, Newton's Cradle. Coffee mug. Got some lockers here. Turn on our lights so we can see. Chunks Chaco. Alien bug, paperweight, folder, blender base, notebooks, not the most exciting things in the world. Uh, attention, it's, if it's been three something since your last something, please go clean up, be considerate of your colleagues, all right? Trying to stay crouchy so that I'm not heard as I walk around in here. Vasco's a different story. He doesn't seem to crouch. I don't know if he can walk around quietly or not. We're picking up all this food. Or as much of it as I can find. Because every little bit helps. Here's a desktop digiframe. I mean, should probably be picking all this crap up, really. Because I'm sure that we could break it down and use it for other things. Ooh, a pistol. 
Oh, a Grendel rifle? Nice. Weapon rack there. Oh, man. Okay, we're getting loaded up now. Choose your chunks. That does not look appetizing. Now with sauce within quotes. <laughs> uh, so great. Your turn to do the dishes, dumbass. All right. Okay. Well. Vasco's very patient. Do you have anything you want to say to me, Vasco? Barrett and the Crimson Fleet have something of a history. They always assume he is a treasure hunter in possession of valuable objects. They are wrong. Usually. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're getting closer and closer. All right. I'm going to hang out in this room here. In fact, let's just uh, have a seat on the couch. Yeah. There we go. We'll just have a little seat on the couch. I'm going to have a seat on the couch while I end this episode. Uh, when we come back next time, we'll keep exploring this place. Uh, we'll move more in that direction. Probably be more pirates we have to fight. I don't know. Maybe we're going to try to talk to the main pirate and call him off. I don't know. Only one way to find out, and that's to come back next time. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, maybe let me know. Leave me a like or a comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.